All right, welcome to Witch Police Radio. I'm uh, on a call today with someone who is new to me, and I think that you are actually fairly new to Winnipeg, but if I have that right. So I think the best way to start this out is if you want to introduce yourself and give a bit of background about what it is you do as a musician, because uh, you were recommended to me, and I wasn't too familiar with what you did. I, I've since kind of uh, you know dug around online a little bit, but um, I think the best way to start it off is if you want to sort of explain, for in your own words, who you are and what you do. Sure, fair enough, Sam. So my name is Todd Hughes, to start with. Uh, the interview, I would say I'm new again to Winnipeg. Not new to Winnipeg, because I was actually born and raised in Winnipeg. So okay. um, I grew up here in, in Winnipeg, a musical family. My mother was at the Hollow Mug, for those of you who are old enough to remember, musical theater, doing uh, shows there, singing and dancing and whatnot. So uh, that was a great upbringing. And then uh, when... About uh, 20, I'm going to say getting close to 30 years now, we went to Calgary. We moved out to Calgary and I was there for 27 years uh, just doing business and doing music as well. I've always been uh, really interested in writing songs. And I've written uh, probably like a lot of people you talk to over the years. I was not a full time musician, but I was uh, working a regular day job and I was writing all sorts of songs at periods of my life. So I would have you know books and binders of songs in various different places and in various different formats uh, and depending on what part of your life and what phase of your life you're in. So uh, probably 10, 12 years ago, I got more serious about doing music uh, quite a bit more and I put a band together in Calgary. We played lots of shows in Calgary, played at the Calgary Stampede quite a number of times. We played around at the Ironwood and different places in Calgary. We did shows charity and uh, other places around town. So, you know, we had a, 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 a good band and good fun there in Calgary. But for family reasons, I decided about an hour before the pandemic, I decided to move back to Winnipeg. So we, we showed up here on um, December. And I'm going to forget even what year it was because the pandemic has gone on forever now. But I guess it's it was 2019. Blur. Yeah, the blur was 2019. And uh, I'm not sure if you're aware, but I'm also involved with the uh, Park Alleys. Are you aware of that? Yeah, I read that on your yeah. website. Yeah. yeah, that's part of the been part of the fun so you know when i was in calgary i was thinking you know in, in some of the venues you'd play like playing a place like the ironwood it's, it's hard to fill a 200 person venue um and we would do it largely when we did fundraisers because uh, we were great at selling tickets and pushing them to people when especially when you're not getting the money yourself you're doing it for a good cause and charity so we we did lots of fundraiser concerts and i always enjoyed that uh, we did them for all sorts of different places, everything from the you know the Calgary Folk Festival to uh, Syrian refugees um, to a, a place uh, building a school in, in uh, Rwanda for in a senior's place in Rwanda. As we had some really good uh, causes and we had a lot of fun doing that. But it seemed to me that the best places for uh, independent artists to play would be a very small venue, like yeah. sort of under you know, 100 people, even 50 to 100 people. So I had this sort of vision in my mind that that would be a, an interesting and fun thing to put together. So we moved back to Winnipeg, as I said, for family reasons, but it was a bit of a homecoming because we still had our son was here, our granddaughter is here, uh, lots of uh, my brothers and uh, sister are here, and my mother is still here. So there's lots of people around here, and my wife's family as well. So, um, and our cottage was here. So I'm at the cottage now, and we're in Ontario. So there was all sorts of reason to come back to Winnipeg. And yeah. um, one of the things I I thought was really interesting was, was I saw that the park alleys for sale, and I thought well, wouldn't that be a fun thing to do to combine bowling? I don't know if you had a chance to get down there yet, Sam, or not. I haven't yet. I've seen a lot of photos of all the shows, and I, it looks like a, a really cool spot to, to do a show. I mean, to see a show and and to play a show, well, too. We'll, <laughs> we'll get you out there, but for sure. So, yeah, I, we did a lot. Of, we ended up um, we ended up uh, buying the building right as the pandemic hit hard. So it was uh, April now, 2020. Everything, you remember April 2020, everything was shut down, and they you know, phone and said, you know, it's time to close on this building. And I said, you know, I'm under my bed, like everybody else here, you know, hiding uh, so I don't get the 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 uh, <laughs> COVID. And, and it was kind of a funny thing, but we ended up pushing the closing day because absolutely nothing was happening. Uh, everything had dropped, you know, you couldn't get anybody to go out to look at a building to do a mortgage or an appraisal or yeah. anything else. It was just totally dead. And I didn't have have a, an exact vision of what I was going to do for the the building. I thought the South Osborne place would be a, 
a good place to go. And it's a growing area. We're living near there. My wife grew up near there. My mother-in-law, you know, was in a bowling league there her whole life and oh, cool. all sorts of people. I knew the bowl there. So I thought it would be a, a great place to combine the two things. We spent a lot of time with an architect um, after we did close named Jack Como. And Jack, uh, we spent a lot of time putting the stage in different places because we thought, well, you know, that's going to be a key part. We're going to be a live music venue. We're going to be a restaurant, bowling alley bar, but we're also going to be, you know, first and foremost, live music. So, and that was sort of what I saw as a contribution that I bring back to Winnipeg and I could contribute back to the music scene in Winnipeg. Um, not that I've been a huge part of the music scene historically, but it was one of the things about moving back that kind of appealed to me was to get yeah. involved a bit with the music scene in Winnipeg, um, you know, just as a musician, but also in the venue piece as well and as a songwriter. And, um, band you know front man for band and all that stuff so uh really saw that as a, a, a an opportunity to have some fun and and to contribute to um to you know to the to the scene in winnipeg so worked with a number of different musicians who i met uh you know who did a you know a wonderful job everything from you know painting the mural on the building to building it physically uh donovan yeah. lock and mandolin player that plays in a band with me Donovan was the main carpenter there and, uh, you know, went there every day with with Dan uh, from Red Moon Road, who's uh, also a carpenter. And, um, you know, the two of those guys were there working hard every day. I was sort of handing them tools and stuff like that and carrying lumber around, but doing my part because, you know, nobody was going anywhere. So we went to the bowling alley every day and it was, you know, we were building the place, playing music, um, doing some bowling, having fun and sort of envisioning how this might come together. And, and at the same time, I was putting a band together. So I put this band together called Slow Train Home. Right. And I hooked up with uh, Donovan Lockton and Kerry Belkowski. Uh, some of these guys you would know, and our drummer is, is Jaime Carrasco, who's, uh, you know, Jaime plays lots of jazz, lots of other bands. Yeah. And Chris Brett, Chris Brett, who's an old, you know, been around the scene you know, forever, Dashing the Dots, um, uh, and, and, and some other bands. So Chris is the guitar player in our band. And so we put this band together. We were we were practicing, getting ready to, uh, you know, rehearsing before uh, the pandemic hit. As I said, you know, I, I remember we started playing then. And then the pandemic was so on and off again that we were playing outside in the park. We were playing in Crescent Drive Park throughout the summer when you could only meet with five people and had to be in the park. We yeah, had fun. Yeah. I had written tons, tons of original songs. And um, from that um, you know, playing mostly primarily original songs, getting ready to go. And at the same time, building the bowling alley, which is a place not just for us, obviously, but a place where lots of musicians could thrive and play. And it was being built by musicians, uh, for musicians, owned by musicians. So I kind of envisioned it as being a key piece of, uh, of a, what, what, of course, in Winnipeg is already a great music scene, certainly compared yeah. to a lot of others. So it was really exciting to, uh, to, to, to be doing that, that the thing was the pandemic just dragged on forever and ever <laughs> and maybe is still dragging on so given all of that um you know an extra year longer than we thought to get the place open we opened up last september um we <laughs> we ended up uh we were supposed to open play our first show as a, a band last august uh in a festival and i ended up having a uh, sort of a quick health scare and I wasn't available unfortunately and so we ended up playing our first gig together the day the bowling alley opened which was in the middle okay. of September so and that was uh so that was great so we, we were playing there a bunch and other bands were playing there and we were you know mixing together with people from other bands I was getting to know people so it's it's been quite a whirlwind year you know we're coming up to a, a year of the band playing and 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 me playing songs and being out there um and the bowling alley being open and, and things being open generally yeah. Uh, so that's sort of that's a a long story to uh, <laughs> the the short history of my return to Winnipeg. Cool. Do, do you have um at this point? I know it's only been a year, uh, but do you have an idea of kind of what works in a bowling alley as far as music? Like, have you been, has there been trial and error of what kind of bands and what kind of music sort of suits that sort of venue? That's a super good question, and I think we do have a pretty good idea. I mean, at first we were not sure, and people were asking us this. They were saying, "Hey, are you going to have uh, are you going to have bowling going at the same time as music? Because that that's not really going to work, is it?" And we said, "Well, you know, we'll, we're going to just play that beer." We really didn't know. And we tried. We said, "Go up on stage and and you know, play your guitar. And we're all going to bowl and yell, you know, and try and see how." You can never really recreate it because there's there's an extra hundred people 
yeah. um, who aren't in the bowling alley. So you just don't know what it's going to end up like. However, when we started, we did book, pri- we booked a few bands that were primarily like, like didn't have a lot of vocals. So, so we had some surf bands, like, you know, Sean Burns band played their yeah. early surf and turf and the Catamounts played there. So we had some bands like that, but we realized quickly that, you know, anything was going to work. We had, you know, bands like Juvel, which was, you know, vocals and acoustic instruments. Yeah, they're great. And, you know, and guess what? People were listening and they were bowling. And from the day we opened on, uh, you know, we were very, very busy there. And we've had lots of wonderful shows. We've had uh, certainly in the spring more. We've had touring acts come through that have played there. We've had lots of local bands. We have a regular Sunday show with the Funky Miracles, who you probably know all those guys as individuals who are sort of, uh, you know, on call studio musicians and gigging yeah. musicians all, every day of their lives. And they play Sundays and put on a great show. And so we have them regularly on Sundays and they don't have, they don't generally sing, you know, they're, uh, they're an instrumental sort of 60s, 70s cover, you know, funked up instrumental. So it's great. So um, we've had that. Our band plays, you know, so sort of a couple of times a month. We play generally original music. We, we yeah. throw in a you know, bunch of covers. I would say we're probably leaning towards a little faster music for ourselves. You know, I find that, you know, people get a little more ramped up if there's, there's a lot of people go there to party. There's a lot of people, I think, as we hit the tail end of the pandemic and, and if nothing else, we've hit, you know, pandemic fatigue, a lot of people going out who want to let their hair down and have fun. Right? Sure. So absolutely, um, we're not really a listening room, you know, where people are going to sit and be super quiet. We've had some, some great shows, like the first show that um, uh, we had the first, first show for a number of bands, but uh you know, gladly played there um, and, and at their first show and it was packed with people, you know, jamming their dancing and, and you know, it, you know, Glenn's band. And they were just fabulous. So we've had shows like that. Um, we've had rock bands who've been around for a long time, like the Lemons, uh, you know, who put on a great show and had a great crowd. We had, um, you know, Brent, uh, you know, Brent Parkin, you know, came in. He's got his own u- unique crowd as well and, yeah. and, and, and good fill for them. Um, so certainly I, I don't want to leave a bunch of people because we've had all sorts of bands play there. I'm, I'm trying to just give you a, a, a feeling for the fact that we've had a lot of different bands there. And it, it's hard to, hard to say what works and what doesn't. Uh, we were, you know, Kerry Belkowski is doing, and he plays in our band. And, and Kerry is a great musician and a great guy. And he, he works at the bowling alley doing about 10 different things. He does the sound a lot. He also does um, the booking for us. So yeah. we were talking today about that, you know, like, and it, it, it's certainly slowed down business there throughout the summer. And so we're trying to think, like, what is it that works? Like, maybe we found that Fridays and Saturdays in July and August are pretty slow. And uh, we've had some great acts through there, but they haven't, you know, their ticketed shows on Friday and Saturday hasn't yeah. been as busy. But we've had some Sundays that have been fantastic. We've had some Thursdays and Wednesdays have been great. Carrie runs an open mic on Wednesdays. Lots of folks coming out there, regular folks. So, uh you know, we're kind of feeling our way through. And I think after we get through our first year, we're about a month away from that. We'll probably be able to sit back and say what works and what doesn't. But we don't know that we've actually been through a normal time yet. Of course, yeah, yeah. No one has, right? I mean, especially as a new venue. Yeah. That's Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's, you know, that's been part of the challenge. So, um, and through this, uh, what happened? It was uh, Rusty Robot, you know, uh, formerly Rusty Matthias, yeah. you know, of all sorts of great bands who I'm sure you know, yeah. and, uh, you know, w- Waking Eyes, etc. And and Rusty was doing the sound for us because he was uh, available and, and uh, you know, looking at, you know, do some different things. And, and uh, so he was he was doing sound quite a bit for our band on Thursdays. And so hearing a lot of our original music and giving us his own input. And we played this song. I wrote this song and we played it and I know we practiced maybe like once or something like that and got him played Russ and you know I, I love that song it was stuck in my head he said and, and he said I could see it sort of as a you know as a cow punk thing you know speed it up a little bit I mean he tells me that you know don't make it sound like I'm a dick producer who told you you had to do this and I had to do that because I would totally open your ideas but he had great ideas yeah. he said I would love to produce a song for you and I, I said well yeah I mean, I'm like probably uh, a lot of people have written a lot of songs. You you don't really, you're not really sure what to do with them once you've got them. You know, I've got two albums that I've done and you end up with 
you know, I always even forget to bring CDs to shows to sell. I'm a terrible uh, salesman at promoting my own <laughs> stuff. And I, I, you know, I like to write the songs and I enjoy the recording process. I love working with the producers. I love getting the, I get, love getting the songs out there and recorded, but what exactly do you do with them? You know, once they're recorded, yeah. but notwithstanding that cow, cow town was sort of an homage to, to my time in Calgary. And I did have, it did have a lot of special feeling to me. So when Rusty liked it and wanted to produce it, I thought, well, this would be great. It'll be a chance to work with Rusty. It'll be fun. It'll be a chance to get the song in a more formal recording uh, type of basis. And then it'll be, uh, you know, it'd be a chance to, to, to see how, how it winds up, you know, maybe a totally different twist on it. So we did that and it, it went great. And he was a, just a, so much fun to work with. He's just yeah. a wild, wild guy. and crazy guy. <laughs> so we had a lot of fun with that. And, uh, then you know when we finished, he said, "Well, now you've got to, You got to do a video. You know, get the video going with that." So, yeah, we did the video with Jeremy Williams, and uh, so Jeremy was a lot of fun too. We said, "Well, it's natural to go to the bowling alley." So we went to the bowling alley with Terry and uh, Rusty and Jeremy. We spent like one afternoon. We did the. I mean, I I, I can't speak for Jeremy because the poor guy's probably spent forever, you know, cutting it and, and, and mixing it. But we spent a half a day at it, you know, yeah. just playing through the songs. 10 times and bowling and whatnot and having some fun with it. And then, uh, you know, Jeremy, who's a great uh, videographer, made it all into a video. So then we had the video and the song. And so I have uh, released it and, uh, you know, put it out there for, for radio and different things and try to promote it a little bit myself in my own way and with other people to just try and get it out there and, and uh, you know, share the, share, share, share what's coming from my heart about my time in Cub. Yeah. Well, one thing I wanted to ask you about is, you know, I know you said earlier that you, this is kind of your return to Winnipeg and that you said, you know, you weren't really uh, involved in the local music scene here until until recently, until you came back and until you, you know, with the venue and everything. What has it been like for you kind of, um, I mean, it sounds like you've made a lot of awesome connections with people like Rusty that, that have, you know, enabled you to, to do things like the single and the video and everything. But what was your sort of impression uh, upon coming back to Winnipeg? And did you feel very welcomed? into the current music scene as someone who had been away from the city for so long? Well, I did, you know, I actually, I did, um, for sure. I, I mean, it's amazing how great the music scene is here. And I would say coming from Calgary, I mean, it felt like to me, uh, and I'm an old guy too, but it felt like to me in Calgary, that there was a pretty, it was an older music scene okay. and I don't want to slag it or anything, but there was a, the, the bands that played regularly were, of the same sort of age and genre at a lot of the, the the more popular venues. And you see a lot of the same faces and the same people playing quite a few of the same places. And they were people of a certain era who had played together for a long time. Wonderful musicians and probably great people. Yeah. I, I wasn't in that scene there at all. I mean, I did my own thing there. But coming to Winnipeg, uh, there's this group of young people. There's all these young people here who are amazing musicians. Yeah. And uh, and there's just like and, and you know it's through Kerry really I've got to give Kerry Bookhouse I've met all these people through him I mean he's been booking band after band I said to Kerry like how many bands do you think there are in Winnipeg that are great it's never bands? ending get, never ending yeah and that's a good question for you I asked you Sam how many <laughs> how many bands do you think there are that you want to book in a club here to play here. I don't think I don't think there's a limit. I mean, I've been doing this show for almost ten years now, and it's seven hundred and something episodes, and I still there's so many bands that I haven't even spoken to yet. Like just just it seems like every week you hear about five or six or seven or eight new ones. And I mean, you know, I, I'm older than a lot of them too. I'm almost forty in a few months, and like a lot of these people are twenty or eighteen, and so right. I'm learning about all kinds of new stuff just just through doing this of uh, bands that I never would have heard of because you know I come from a certain. Uh, age group and scene and uh, you know when i played played in bands it was a certain time period and there's there's so many just kind of constantly coming up and churning and it just never stops it's like this never ending uh it, it just keeps going and going and going it's great yeah and the other thing that surprised me we started doing this open mic on wednesday and again carrie it was his idea and he's hosting the open mic but you know i sort of thought it was kind of a place where people go where maybe they haven't played before to sort of get their nerve up and and and, and try a song or two and there's a little bit of that for sure but there's also really great musicians yeah who come up and play there like jamie buckrow is another guy i should have mentioned him. the honey sliders played yeah several band, times yeah. at the alley and jamie's played there a ton we have mu music in the afternoon and jamie comes there often on wednesdays if, or either you know after a gig or something if he's not gigging he comes there and just plays the uh plays the open mic too and you know we've had 
Uh, Roman Clark gets up there and plays a song, you know, on his guitar instead of on the drum kit. He's an amazing drummer and from amazing, you know, pedigree, musical pedigree. So um, I would say that there's just a, a scene of all these, you know, a lot of young people who are really vibrant and fabulous musicians. And I've, I've really enjoyed that. And I felt, um, you know, I felt certainly welcome into it. I don't feel like I'm, you know, 100 percent into it in the way that all these people are, are working you know, out there gigging every single day and that yeah. sort of thing. But um, for sure, there's there's a there's uh, the scene in Winnipeg seems really good to me and I and healthy and I, you know, I'm proud to be doing a small part of it with you know the venue and then a little bit with the band and then a little bit with writing the songs. So, yeah. What is uh what's next for you now? Then I guess uh, as a songwriter, as a musician, now that you have, you have the single done, you know the song, the video, and you, there's obviously some momentum going there with the band playing regularly at your venue and things like that. What's sort of in the cards for the the near future? Yeah, uh, I think that the the thing that's on my mind for that Sam is really to get some more songs finished, some original songs. We have um, we started. I, I had a lot of songs sort of half baked through the pandemic and we probably with Chris Brett, who's, you know, a great engineer and, and producer himself, a recording engineer. Um, we, we did a, I don't know how many songs we've got half in the bag in his studio, but we've got a whole bunch of them that we should get in there and finish. You know, it just got hard because we would do the bad tracks and then, you know, one person, the pandemic would get worse. You couldn't sure. have anybody in your house. Then somebody would come in and do the guitar and then while well, you, you take three weeks to get somebody to come in and do the other parts and instead of uh, using the time to get everything finished quickly. Like, you know, a lot of people thought they were going to do, you know, writing the great novel and stuff like that during the pandemic, everything seemed to drag out and we got little yeah. bits of all sorts of songs. I mean, so what I see in the near future is finishing those songs. And I'm not sure if there's any point in, in doing an album per se. I mean, for me, I would probably like to focus on the social media part of it and trying to build like, you know, releasing a, a, a song a month or something like that, where you get okay. the songs and, and you build, a, you know, a little bit of a YouTube channel and that sort of thing with uh, people that, you know, that, that want to engage in your music, may not necessarily live in Winnipeg, um, but might enjoy your music and release some stuff regularly. I've got lots and lots of songs written. And, and you know, when I feel inspiration, I'm happy to sit down and and write a song and do it again. I, I do, I've been a person my whole life. I've always done a lot of different things. So I've always got, you know, 48 different things on the go and uh, that I'm doing. But for, for music, um, I feel quite, quite capable of continuing to do, you know, a song, whether it's every month or every couple of months, a new song with a, a release and a video and everything yeah. else with it and continue to play as a band. And, and as the band goes, you know, I love playing with the guys and I would like to continue to play we play some other venues. We're playing a, a festival in a couple of weeks at Gentle Fest. We're playing cool. there. Uh, we're playing at the Beer Can in uh, two weeks from Friday, um, uh, maybe a week from this Friday coming up, uh, the 19th. So, you know, playing some other places too, getting out and doing. I don't want to be sort of stuck in the, uh, I guess, pigeonholed a little bit as, you know, this guy's the owner of the park alley. So that's where they play every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, you yeah, know. Yeah, we don't want to be just booking ourselves all the time there, which, you know, I suppose we can play there as often as we we liked. But we're we're you know we're trying to branch out a little bit as a band too and play some different things. Cool. Well, just before I let you go here, what um what's the best way to to find you online? Like you said, you're hoping to do more social media stuff. Uh, where can people find you and and the venue and and the band? I guess what's the best way to uh sort of keep track of what's going on with with all three? Uh, well, thanks for asking that. Um. You know, I have, the music is out on uh, everywhere, like Spotify, Apple Music, etc. All those regular places. I have a website, just Todd with one D, ToddHughes.ca, and the links should be on there. Um, we also have a website for the band, SlowTrainHome.com, and uh, those places. You know, we're keeping up with the, uh, you know, the videos, the music, uh, shows that we're doing, etc. The shows are typically on the Slow Train Home uh, website because we're doing that. So. And that's another thing I'm doing, uh, you know, is trying to clean up all the social media so it's a little more organized so that people, as you say, can go to one place. You know, you don't want to you want to know where is the easiest and quickest place to, uh, right. you know, to get a hold of uh, to get a hold of you. So I've been you know, trying to do some things about um, 
building it up on Spotify a little bit, you know, not that there's any money in that, but, you know, trying to end YouTube, which seems to be another thing that, you know, there are people finding more people are finding music on YouTube than anywhere yeah. else. I understand. And I don't know if that's just anecdotal or true, but that's what I was told. And so, you know, that seems like a, a good place to spend some time trying to build that channel up a little bit and get some content on there that people enjoy and that's worthwhile and, you know, try not to waste people's time and try and make sure that we're having good stuff put out there. For sure. And then the, the venue, where, where can people find out what's happening at the venue? The venue, uh, the best place is always the website, parkalleys.com. And alleys is A-L-L-E-Y-S.com. So uh, parkalleys.com, and we're working on that too, so people can book their bowling lanes uh, online and oh, cool. they can make reservations. Right now, it's been, uh, there's lots of content on there people can see, but people have had to go off the site to check for shows. And we're trying to integrate that. Uh, we've been trying, you know, we were on Eventbrite for a while and now we're on Show Pass because we sell tickets on the weekends. But we're, we're building our own uh, calendar. So we'll have our calendar of events right on the park alleys. And people can see who's playing because it is a little bit frustrating uh, when you can't just look at the month and pick out when you want to go and who you want to go see. Yeah. Cool. Well, yeah, okay. Well, people should check that out definitely. And they should check out, um, you know, all the new music that's going to be coming out of uh, your various uh, projects. And yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's, it's very cool that there's, uh, I always like seeing new venues crop up. And then the fact that it's kind of a, a smaller scale one um, that also has the bowling element, it, it's very cool. And I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad you guys uh, managed to put that together in such a crappy time for, for the world, basically, for doing anything <laughs> you managed to get the venue open. So that's great.